2501. I'm going to do a couple of problems from section 5 on determinants. This one is, um, I'm going to do one special case really, the, the case of um, n equals 3. You'll see in the problem sheet they ask, invite you to do the full general case of the uh, what, what's known as the nth van der Mond determinant. I'm just doing it in the case of 3. So I have uh, an a1, a1 squared and down to a3. In the general case, you can continue on down to an and so on across the matrix. And the result's much the same. And the method, the technique, is much the same. So having seen it in the case for 3, you can then go and do the general case. So it, this is a, involves a, this is a, an interesting matrix. It's got lo lots of applications in many different parts of, of mathematics, in fact. And we're going to try and factorise this determinant. That is, we're going to expand this out in some way and then um, express it in a factored form. And the trick for doing this is very similar to the previous video in that I want to get some variables into this and then turn it into a polynomial and then be able to try and work out what the roots of the polynomial are. So I'm going to begin by, instead of the x, the a3, I'm going to turn that one into a variable. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a function now, I'll call it f of x. So I'm going to leave the first row alone, the second row alone, and I'm going to turn that into an x and an x squared. And it's pretty clear that, given what we did in the previous example, you can see that expanding it along the bottom row, this is going to be a quadratic. This is a quadratic, not monic this time, not necessarily monic. But this is going to be a quadratic in x. So I want to try and work out some of the roots of the quadratic, if we can. And in fact, in this case, we can work out um, both of the roots of the quadratic, because if I put x to be equal to a1, then the bottom row will be exactly the same as the top row, so the determinant's automatically zero. So I'm just going to say clearly f of a1 is zero. And also, if I put x to be a2, well, it'll give me two rows zero as well, so f of a2 is zero. So I now know two of the roots of the, of the quadratic. I know essentially what the quadratic looks like, except that it won't be necessarily monic. So I can say then that my f of x then is some number, some constant, we don't quite know what that is yet, times x minus a1 and x minus a2. So in a very simple step, we're able to, to work out what, the, what this determinant looks like. Well, this determinant lo looks like, except for the initial constant. Now, the a1 is the coefficient, is the coefficient of x squared in this side. So it's going to be the coefficient of x squared in the determinant. And we're going to get that coefficient by just crossing out the row and column and taking that subdeterminant. So a then is going to be just the determinant 1, a1, 1, a2, and that's easy because that's a2 minus a1. So now we know exactly what, the, what this function f of x is, and finally we need to get back to the original determinant, and that's easy because I'm just going to now I replaced a3 with x to solve the problem. Now I do the reverse. I'm going to put x equals a3, and I can factorise the van der Mond determinant. So uh, v3, then, is just f evaluated at a3, and so I now plug everything in. So a is a2 minus a1. Now this is a3 minus a1, and this is a3 minus a2. And so what I've done is I've taken this determinant and essentially expanded it and factorised it and written in this factored form. And you'll see that if you put a fourth row and column in, you'll see exactly a similar pattern happening. You'll get four factors and so on. You can do the general van der Mond determinant. And the technique is going to be very much the same.